In this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the top performing hidden trades jobs that nobody's really talking about. And after analyzing over 300 blue collar service type businesses, we've boiled it down to just a handful of potential businesses that can make you thick profit margins. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Also, if you missed it, Cody Sanchez, who is a much bigger YouTuber within this space, she decided to copy my first hidden trades job video, which got well over a million views. She copied it verbatim, same title, same thumbnail, same exact content. So if you want the original content before Cody Sanchez decides to repurpose it into her own video, then you are actually in the right spot. And Cody Sanchez, if you're watching this, you continue to do you, even if you happens to be me. Okay, so first on the list is the incredible and highly lucrative business of building pole barns. Pole barns are everywhere. I'm sure that you've driven by hundreds of them over the years in your local area. Pole barns add a ton of value to a property. Really, any outbuilding is going to increase the value of a property, but pole barns especially add a ton of value because they're practical, they're versatile, and they're very useful. And owners of property love to build them as a secondary building on their property and what we're seeing is that they're willing to shell out upwards of 40 to $50 a square foot to build a pole barn on the property these days. That means that a 34 by 50 foot pole barn like this one can easily balloon up to $150,000 to have it built in certain areas of the country. The good news for you is that pole barns are like little gold mines. And if you're capable of building them for interested customers, you can make a ton of money. So let's take a look at all the different ways that you can monetize off of building pole barns. So looking at a $140,000 pole barn example, ways to monetize would be architectural design and layout, excavation and gravel, there's big money in that, local zoning and permitting, of course you're gonna need to get the customer through that, downspouts and gutters, utilities implementation, you're gonna have to lay the concrete and do the landscaping, and then of course you're gonna have to build the building and put the doors on. So as you can see, there's lots of ways that you can monetize off of building a pole barn. Let's go ahead and break down the numbers so you can see how much you could actually charge for these different services and then add it all up and see how much it actually costs at the time of this video to build a pole barn, at least out here in Colorado, what it would potentially cost to build one. So let's come back around to this 34 by 50 foot pole barn example, which by the way would have about 15 foot ceilings in it. Let's take a look at the potential expense breakdown on how much it would actually cost or what you could potentially charge to build a building like this. So first on the list is excavation costs. Excavating of the driveway and the building spot would be upwards of $30,000. Then you have permitting and zoning at $2,500. You would have crushed concrete on the driveway leading up to the building, which would be upwards of $12,000. You're going to need at least a hundred amp electrical setup in there at $7,500. Then you have the shell of the building, which would run you upwards of $50,000 just to build the shell of the building. You're gonna need four quality doors on a building like this pole barn example, which would run you about $10,000. You're gonna need gutters and downspouts at $1,500. The inside concrete would be $12,500. And then of course you're gonna need outside concrete around the building at $7,500. And last on the list, you're gonna need some nice landscaping at $5,000. If you add that all up, it comes to over $138,000 to build a 34 by 50 foot pole barn in Colorado at the time of this video. So looking at the big picture here, guys, if you sell 10 pole barns and build 10 pole barns like this a year, your business could be doing $1.4 million. If you sell and build 72 of these pole barns, just copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, 72 of them, your business could do upwards of $10 million a year. Let's move on to business idea number two. But before we do, if you're new to the channel, my name is Adam Zwigler, and this channel is dedicated to helping people start and scale businesses in the trades, blue collar work, service type businesses. Start them from scratch, scale them to potentially $10 million in annual revenue. If you're interested in learning how to start and build service related businesses, then consider liking and subscribing. All right, on to business idea number two which is a flagpole service business. Bet you've never thought of that one, right? But you've seen flags around, right? In front of businesses, there's the long flagpoles with the flags waving in front. You've got homes that have flags installed on the front of the houses. Bet you've never thought of that as a business. The reality is, is I know at least one person that's built a business doing over a million a year 
just servicing flag poles, okay? Installing them, setting them up, servicing them on an annual basis. This is an actual hidden trades job business that not that many people are doing and could potentially boom in your city or small town. Okay, so flagpole charges. First, you've got broken or falling restringing, and this is typically $150 plus parts. You've got flagpole removal and disposal, which can run upwards of $350 to $500. If a flagpole is leaning and it needs to be straightened up, it can be upwards of $150 to $250. Pulley and top ornament replacement, $250 plus parts. And new flagpoles can run upwards of $800 to $5,000, depending on the complexity and how big the project is. A few final thoughts here, guys. This can potentially be a recurring business on an annual basis because people need these flagpole service probably at least once a year annually. There's very low competition and a surprisingly high amount of people want a flagpole or a flag installed on the outside of their house. There's a lot of people that want this service every single year. Okay, let's move on to business idea number three. But before we do, if you are somebody that's sitting there and you are toying with this idea of starting your own service-related company, consider coming over to buildupuniversity.com. That's our website. Over there, we have the ability to help you launch your first website. It is inexpensive. It's a form that you fill out. It takes about 15 minutes. You have to give us a certain amount of information for the website, and then we build it for you. And it looks great. It's a very simple website, but there's a couple different layouts. They look really nice. The other thing that's over there on Buildup University Dot com is a one hour consulting call. If you need help or advice starting or scaling your service related company, consider getting on a consulting call. Now on to our next hidden trades business idea, which is an escalator maintenance business. And guys, there's a lot of people that are talking about elevator maintenance and how profitable that is. And it is profitable, but there's very few people really talking about escalator maintenance, which has a ton of potential to pile on recurring customers with huge elaborate, expensive, and highly profitable maintenance contracts. Let's break down some of the highlights and details of how the escalator maintenance business works. So customers are typically expected to sign a five-year maintenance contract. At the end of that contract, the contract typically rolls over and renews for another one to five years. There's only a small window of time to cancel the contract. So customers are locked in and they typically are locked in for a really long time. If you work for an escalator company, you will most likely be making upwards of $120,000 a year. That's pretty good. That actually works out to be $50 to $60 an hour. Now, if you own an escalator company, the labor rates literally become insane. According to Elevator Inc., here's what the customer gets charged on an hourly basis to send out a tech. If it's a single tech, they're gonna charge $263 an hour. If there's two techs going out, it would be upwards of $394 an hour. If it's a single tech that has to work overtime or outside of normal business hours, they will charge upwards of $368 an hour to the customer. And if two techs need to go out after hours or in overtime, it's $551 an hour. Okay, let's go ahead and break down the revenue on an escalator maintenance business. Let's say, you own an escalator maintenance business and you have two techs that work for you and your hourly rate is $394 an hour. These two guys, they work for you eight hours a day. You're not charging any overtime. They get off in the evening. They don't work weekends, all that stuff. So you're just paying them just 40 hours a week. So that's a total of 80 hours a week that you're paying between these two labor techs, okay? That works out to be over $31,000 a week that you are billing your customers. That is over $133,000 a month. And annual revenue could be over $1.6 million with two techs that are working for you on escalator maintenance. And that is why this is also included in our top hidden trades jobs that you can work where you can make a ton of money. If you start a business, you'll make even more money, but you could also make great money if you go and work for somebody else and just learn how to do these hidden trades. Okay, that wraps up our top hidden trades job video for this upcoming year. I wish you guys the best in whatever you decide to start. Consider checking out some of our other videos that feature other great businesses. Also consider coming over to buildupuniversity.com where we can potentially help you with a website or help consult you in getting started and consider liking and subscribing. 
on to the next.